guys, welcome back to my channel. So, if you guys have been around this channel, you might know that one of my favorite things to do with dolls is to hybrid different dolls. Um, I just think it's really fun. I like seeing all the different combinations and making like all new dolls with like different heads and body combinations. That's just what it feels like to me. So I was on Instagram and I saw somebody named Vicky Yin um, and I will link them down in the description box. They hybrided a rainbow high body with something called a VIP pets head. And I mean, I think we all know what rainbow high is, but VIP pets are like these blind box things where they're like dogs and I think also cats. Um, and the combo was like, so so cute so i just really wanted to try it i ordered a vip pets blind box thing off of amazon and the thing that i got or the vip pet that i got was just not at all the one that i wanted um the sculpt was a little bit different than what i wanted um like the mouth was open and mainly that's just the main thing um and the hair was just like this combo is so bad in my opinion it just looks so bad with all that being said, I'll probably make another one of these because this head does match my Sunny Madison Rainbow High doll exactly. And I have two Sunny Madisons and like, why not, you know? I did want to show you guys though, I took the VIP Pets packaging and I recycled it. And I put all of my AliExpress and eBay heads inside of it. So I'm a recycling ass beach. Um, <laughs> I just, you know, try and be ecological or whatever. So after my sad experience with this VIP Pets blind box, I was like, why am I doing this? Let's go on eBay and let's just see what they got on there. So I found this one and this one, I just really liked the like combo better. I liked the sculpt better and I liked the hair, um, but I did not have a rainbow high doll to match it. So we went to Target. Upon my outing to Target or Target, um, I saw that Hallie Capri or Skylar Bradshaw would probably work pretty well for this head. Um, they both had like cool brown skin tones. So I picked up Hallie Capri, honestly, cause I thought she was cuter. <laughs> so that's what we went with. It's kind of interesting cause I've found as I've gotten into dolls, as I've gotten like older with like doll repainting and stuff, um, I used to be so excited about opening dolls when I was a kid and now as an adult, I absolutely hate it. Like it is the bane of my existence. I hate all like the trash that happens from it. I feel like I just have little plastic bits around my apartment after I open a doll and I just hate it. So, but I figured I'd do a little box opening for you guys. Um, as usual, the rainbow high art is beautiful, stunning. The box looks great. Um, and this doll came with like a lot of cool stuff, like a towel and extra feet, extra feet, which is kind of also one of the main selling points that like is why I picked this over Skylar Bradshaw. She comes with flat feet um, and also healed feet, which is just really cool. Like I am here for that. She also comes with one of the face molds that is not like the signature rainbow high face mold, which I kind of prefer. Um, so, I mean, we're, we're probably gonna use her on a different, on a different project because she's just too pretty not to. Oh, so what are we doing? Um, <laughs> I find sometimes when I do hybrids or a lot of the time when I do hybrids, I just like want to hybrid them and I don't really have an idea in mind. So that was sort of what this project was. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do with her. So I was kind of scrolling through YouTube and I actually found Moonlight Jewels pop star doll repaint video. Um, and I was like, oh my God, why don't we make a pastel puppy pop star? That sounds incredibly adorable. So that's what we're doing today. Finally, onto the basics of doll customizing. So I have to pop each one of the heads off and I do so with a blow dryer. And I wanted to see what this combo looked like because I've only seen it with clothes on. Um, so I wanted to see what it looks like when like the body is in the nude and show you guys. So a couple things, the hole that's in the um, VIP pet's head fits perfectly on this body. I also realized that the head doesn't quite match the body as exactly as I was hoping, but I think I can work with it. I'm taking the paint off the head with some 100% acetone and the paint was a little bit hard to get off. Where it is like around the eyes and stuff was like easy enough, but for some reason on like the nose, that white bit was really, really difficult to get off and I really had to scrub it. The mold was incredibly cute. Um, 
it's like super cute. I'm going to be keeping the hair because the head is a little bit hard and I figured that would be annoying to reroute. Plus they come with pretty nice hair. Um, I'm getting right into the face up because I don't need to do anything to prep it really. So I spray the doll three times with Mr. Super Clear, waiting 15 minutes between each spray and wearing a respirator mask. And you will notice that the head is stained. That is because this is my second attempt at a face up. Um, the first attempt, I filmed it in kind of like a weird way and my head was just in the way for literally the entirety of it. So take tail. It's fine. I did a better job this time, so whatever. But um, yeah, I'm doing anime eyes again. Yay! <laughs> um, so I'm sketching out the general shape of anime eyes that I want, and I'm sort of staying like the size and the size of the eye molds that she has. For this first initial sketch and this first layer, I am putting more details in than I normally would with my normal style. And I specifically do this when I do anime eyes because I want them to be about as exact as I can get them. I mean, I generally want that with any face up, but I feel like it's more obvious on anime eyes because they're so big and they're a little bit more simplistic than my normal style when it comes to eyebrows. So I'm adding in things like lashes, eyebrows, just to get the exact kind of placement that I want for the two eyes. Since she has a little bit of a deeper complexion, I'm using more like kind of peachy red colors for her general blushing around the face. And I'm also putting some of this on her nose and her lips. For her nose and her lips, I'm really layering up this red color because I want them to stand out a little bit more than the general blushing around her face. I also gave her some blushing on her nose bridge thing. I guess she doesn't really have a nose bridge, but I put a ton there because I want to make her look like she's a little sun-kissed peepee. I outlined her lips and the bottom of her nose. I was debating between doing a kind of more thicker outline on her nose, but it looked a little bit too intense. So we're just going with this. When I do anime face-ups, I try to hold back a little bit with my blushing because um, it can just look a little weird because <laughs> it's like a cartoony face. So I didn't want to go too intensely, but I am still blushing around the face. Um, and I'm doing so with like browns, um, peachy colors for highlights and like reds and pinks. I did add a little bit of blue to her brow bone and her inner corner, um, even though she's like cartoony and maybe it looks a little weird, but I just love doing it, all right? I'm addicted to the blue. To make the line a little bit sharper around her nose and her mouth, I'm just going over it with some paint. I wanted the eyes to go from a gradient of dark blue to a lighter blue to a yellow, so I'm doing so first with my pencils. I lost a lot of definition around the eyes when I did shading, so I'm bringing that back with highlights with a nude watercolor pencil, and I'm just doing kind of sharp lines around the eyes. I feel like my weakness for anime eyes is like the concerned eyebrows. They just look so good together, so that's the shape I went with. To further emphasize those highlights, I'm taking nude watercolor and I'm just going over some of the lines that we laid down with pencil, some completely, some just very slightly to create a more kind of bold highlight effect. So instead of layering up the shading in the eyes, just layer after layer with pencil, I just don't have the time or patience for that, I'm taking my gouache and I'm going over those areas with the corresponding colors, so dark blue, light blue, and then yellow. This also gives those areas just a way more kind of bright color effect than I would ever be able to get with pencils. If y'all don't know how to blend gouache, I also uh, don't really know how to blend gouache, but um, I am laying down the colors, so like dark blue and then light blue, and then I'm taking my brush with a little bit of water on it and going to where those colors touch and sort of just gently running my brush across it, and it's helping it blend a little bit. Also, when in doubt, blend with pastels. So <laughs> I'm taking a little bit of pastels on a brush and I'm just dabbing that on top of the gouache and it's helping blend the two colors together. If you guys watch my dollar paint supply haul, then you know I got some new expansive <laughs> supplies from Blick and I'm using a couple of them in this video. Um, one of them is the neon watercolor palette. I'm just giving her some like chunky neon liner with that. 
Every doll needs Pearlux Macro Pearl all over their face, so of course I'm giving her some. I really love the stylized effect that some animes have for blushing, so I'm just giving her three quick little pencil marks with a red pencil on her cheeks. With the same shade that I used for her liner from the Neon Watercolor Palette, I'm taking that and adding a highlight to her eyes. Um, I would say my biggest complaint with this is that I kind of have to layer it up a little bit. It's not like super, super pigmented, but I guess that's also just kind of how watercolor is. I'm getting the general oval shape that I want for her pupil with a black pencil, and then I'm going over it with some black paint. I really like the lined shading effect that some anime eyes have, so I'm adding some flicks of blue on the top of her eye and then some coming out from her pupil. To really get her eyes defined, I'm going over the lines of her eyes with black watercolor pencil. We're really starting the final stages of just like deepening all of this definition up. So I took black pastels and I'm really just stamping that down on the top of her eye. So this neon watercolor kept doing this. See that? Yep, it kept flaking off. Um, so I'm going to be, <laughs> I redid it a couple times, but it just kept happening. So I'm going to be doing a more permanent solution, which I will show you guys later. I don't know why it's doing this, by the way. It's very annoying. <laughs> To add more definition to those brows and to give the hair a little bit more of like a flowy effect, I'm going over them with some brown watercolor. Typically I go over one side of the highlights on the eyes with some metallic watercolor and I wasn't going to for this but I decided that I just, I missed it a little bit so I took some metallic gold and I went over the left side highlight. I had a black line coming down from the top of the eyes. I saw it in a couple anime eyes and I just thought it looked pretty cool, so I'm just adding it to my anime eyes. Sometimes when I want a very precise flick to my lines, but I don't feel super comfortable doing it with a paintbrush, I'll grab a micron pen. I've never seen anybody do this, by the way, and I don't really know why, but I've never had issue with it, um, like, inner fearing with my face ups later on. I feel like you could do this with other colors of microns as well, but I don't have other colors. I only have black. To add a pop of color to the black of the eyes, I'm taking neon pink from that neon watercolor palette and just adding a line of that to the top of the eyes. Add a bit of blue pearlex to the bottom of the pupil. It just gives it this nice kind of reflective pop of color down there. For eye highlights, I wanted to do a blue highlight on the top of the eye with some light blue gouache. The true MVP of all of my face-ups is my metallic watercolor palette, um, and I'm adding a line of metallic duochrome purple around the pupil. I've mentioned in the past that I really like the scratchy 
fuzzy effect that some lines around the eyes of anime art has. So I'm trying to replicate this with some black watercolor and a very tan of brush and I'm just flicking lines going towards the pupil of the eye. There's an artist on Instagram named Nashi Artificial and I will link them into my description box, but they do this effect really beautifully. Her catch lights are pretty simple, they're just two circles on the very top innermost part of the eye and I also added some little shines to her cheeks, just two dots there too. I was gonna keep the eyes how they were, but I just wanted them to have a little bit more highlight on that middle part. So I'm taking a yellow watercolor and I'm just doing some lines just in that area to further emphasize the design of the eyes. Once I sprayed the doll with MSC after this though, they completely disappeared. So I went over them with a lighter yellow. Her face up is almost done, but I'm taking some Vallejo gloss varnish and I put some of that over her little nose and her little lips. I love giving my anime dolls chunky glitter, so I'm giving her one little chunky star glitter on her eyes and I'm putting it in place with some Elmer's glue. I also gave her a little chunky glitter on her cheek, just a little heart with Elmer's glue as well. Honestly, the cutest queen there ever was. I love her little baby head. On to blushing the body. So I'm blushing the body with basically the same tones that I used on the face. Um, I lost a lot of footage of this, but I did capture footage of me giving her a little swirly belly button. I don't normally keep the panties on dolls, but um, the rainbow high panties are really annoying to get off, so she just gonna have the panties. So I'm once again, here asking you for your financial support. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Bernie, hey. Um, but no, I am going over the line. The neon watercolor flaked off, so we're just going over it. I'm over it, we're going over it with some yellow acrylic paint. All right, hair. So um, I was kind of limited with her hair because, okay, it's very long, so I cut a giant chunk of it off, but her bangs were like so strange. <laughs> they were like very chunky. I don't know if she came this way from like the factory or if the kid who owned her before me did this to her, but um, I just tied it up in a ponytail because I felt a little bit limited. And I tied it up with this pom-pom that came with one of the VIP pets that I bought. And I decorated it with some expressive thumbtacks. Yes, queen. <laughs> On to the clothes. So like literally so many people that I feel like I know, I am also obsessed with Euphoria. Um, and there is a scene, I believe in season two, episode one, where Maddie Perez is wearing this dress. And I was like, oh my God. Let's make it in doll form. So I cut some pieces with um, some velvet pink fabric and I hemmed all of them with glue. In retrospect, I should have made the peephole on her chest quite a bit bigger, but I didn't, so whoopsie daisies. Um, I'm sewing the shoulders. I sewed her dress up the side seam next. Then she needs her little arm socky thing, so I just sewed up a tube. I wanted to spice up the dress a little bit, so I folded a strip of this green tool in half and gather stitched it and sewed that to the bottom of the dress. With a little square of yellow vinyl, I put some Elmer's glue on one side and dipped that into some chunky glitter and glued that onto the peephole of her dress.
So her dress was like a little bit very short. So <laughs> I made her some, I guess these are bloomers. Um, I'm just sewing them up the sides and look at them nice little grainy panties. Love them so much. All right, so I bought Bella Parker. As you can see, she was like kind of my model doll recently for a different project. And I'm just, I'm stealing this jacket. This jacket is too cool for me not to steal it. And I also stole her stockings. All right, thank you so much, Bella Parker. We're gonna be using them on this doll. <laughs> They're just nice. They're so nice. The Rainbow High clothes are so nice. For shoes, she's getting some fluffy little boots. So I'm just hemming the top. By the way, these shoes are really easy to make. So if you're like awful at making shoes like your girl is, try these out. <laughs> I folded it in half and sewed it all up around the shoe, good side to good side. I flipped it and then trimmed some of the fur off camera. For soles of the shoes, I'm using some of my felt and I'm just gluing that to the bottom of the shoe. These are all of her clothes, but I decided she needed just a couple more accessories, you know? So I am making her a microphone and I took a skewer, a wood skewer, and I'm cutting that in the appropriate areas and a bead. For the bottom, I didn't have a pearl that was like the right size, so I just glued two halfback pearls together with some hot glue. I hot glued that to the bottom of the microphone or the bottom of the wood skewer that I made, and I painted it all black. I went over the black with some metallic pink acrylic paint. I was gonna stop here, but I showed it to my husband and he said it didn't really look like a microphone. I just look like a like scepter or like magical wand or something. And I was like, honestly, he's not wrong. It doesn't really have the microphone texture. So I put some craft glue on top and dipped that in caviar beads and put some UV resin on top of that just to hold everything in place. And I think it looks more like a microphone. She came with the VIP pets thing, came with this like pink collar and I wanted to use it. So I'm going over it with some gesso and then I'm painting it yellow with some acrylic paint. And with that, she is done y'all. I am pretty happy with how she turned out. Um, I think she's just, I don't know. I really like my anime dolls. Um, they kind of hold like a weird special place in my heart because they're just really different from things that I normally work on and I just think the VIP pet and rainbow high combo is like the cutest thing ever. So um, I hope you guys like her too and if you really dig this combo, let me know. Um, I just love trying out new hybrids. I also want to get a photo with her with my rainbow high custom, which by the way, I need to make another one soon because I have so many rainbow high dolls and they're just all staring at me and I have one of the junior ones. I got one of those recently and they're so cute. Like I thought the rainbow high ones were so cute, but those ones are like beyond cute okay um but yeah let me know what you guys think about her down below like this video if you like this video subscribe it makes me happy and i hope you guys are having a beautiful day bye